Got your Bibles? Let's go to Revelation as we continue to go through it, verse by verse. And, and uh, I want you to go to Revelation 21. We'll, we're getting close, aren't we? It's been about a year and a half. We ought to be getting close. I, I, but I like going through the Bible the way we have been. Now, let me make an announcement. Uh, everyone online, would you uh, listen carefully? Uh, first of all, share what I'm going to be preaching tonight. It's going to be a blessing, especially you folks that are shut in. There'll be a day you're not going to be shut in. Amen. You're going to be in heaven. But the announcement I want to give you, and Sean, I tried to get you, but you was in here a few minutes late. We, I met with what deacons were here. Uh, Brother Ray Humphrey, we want to uh, reach out and bless Brother Ray. Uh, you know he's going through it. And what we want to do uh, initially, and, and if we get a good offering, uh, we'll do more. But what we want to do initially is get a lift chair. And uh, we priced one, I think it's around $3,000. But if we can get more than that, uh, where we might get a portable ramp. Uh, we've talked about some, they know about it, a modular type ramp. But we're not sure we're going to go that direction, but we may. But uh, will you pray this Sunday morning after the uh, uh, service, we're going to take up an offering for Brother Ray, and uh, we're going to get that uh, lift chair first, and then any other things that we can with what money we have, we're going to help him uh, so he can get around good. He wants to get back at church. So you, you pray about that. We'll do that Sunday. If you're traveling, uh, do this. You can go to my v TVVC app, do special offering for Ray Humphrey, and just write that on there. And if you're traveling, be sure if you're traveling, pay your tithe too. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, But let's be faithful to our giving. Critical time. I, boy, I was over into the new building. That thing is looking good. I want y'all to know something. They got some paint in there. I, it's looking good, I'm, and I'm thankful for it. All right, Revelation chapter 21. Uh, how many's ever been to Yosemite uh, National Park? Anybody in the church? A few of you. It's a big place, isn't it? Uh, I, I remember the story of this lady went into the park, and there was a guide there, and the guide said, uh, she, she went up to the guide, and she said, what can I see in this park What for with one hour? And he said, well, the only thing you could really do is go over and sit on a rock and cry because you ain't going to see much in an hour. It's a massive place. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do something tonight. I'm going to take you on a grand tour. Amen? A grand tour. I've been to a lot of beautiful places, but I'm going to somewhere one day that I have not seen or ear heard or entered in the heart of man what God has laid up for us. So what I'm going to do is give you a guided tour of heaven. Now, John, the apostle, had a guided tour of heaven. He was personally taken on a guided tour. Now, uh, who took him? Well, if you look at verse 9 and verse number 10, the Bible said, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So John uh, was escorted or uh, guided by an angel. And uh, I don't claim to be an angel, okay? So, but we are going to guide you tonight and take you through the Word of God. I'm glad heaven is real, amen? amen. Heaven is real. This angel got him. Some criticize Christians for being so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. But really, Chad, the opposite is really true. Many of us are so earthly minded 
that we're no good to heaven or earth. Somebody help me preach. My Bible said in Colossians, if you then be risen with Christ, set those things which are above where Christ uh, sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on the thing above and not the things on the earth. Uh, we need to be heavenly minded, Brother Zach. I think we're too earthly minded. The Bible said in Matthew 6 and verse 20 and 21, but lay up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your heart is not in heaven, it's because your treasure is down here. I, I don't know if you got that. If your heart is not in heaven, it's because your treasure is down here. You value what's here more than you value what's over there. Is that good preaching? I think that's where most of us are. It's not our treasure that God wants anyhow. He wants your heart. And if he gets your heart, he'll get all of you. Good preaching, preacher. As we take this guy toward the heaven, we need to remember the book of Revelation is full of symbolism. Uh, many things we're going to find in this chapter are, are symbols and prophecies and greater glories and and. Uh, he, he uses symbolism to give us an idea of what heaven's going to be. So if you've got a little note, you've got your notes, you've uh, got the main points, and you can fill in uh, the sub points if you like. Let's, number one, talk about the geography of heaven. First thing I want to say, heaven is a real place. It's a material place. It's not some gaseous, mysterious, mythological place. It is a real, tangible place. Uh, Jesus said, and Chad quoted, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to pair, repair what? A place for you. Praise God. Uh, Jesus didn't go to prepare a state of mind. Somebody help me here a little bit. Won't y'all get in on this a little bit? Uh, there will be one day we'll be in a real place, in a resurrected body, in a resurrected place. Glory. Uh, Abraham looked for a city. Whose, build, whose, found, whose builder and maker was God. Amen. The apostle Paul said this. I, I like this. I will give you all something here. This will help you. I knew a man, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 3, in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows such a one who was caught up into the third heaven. And you said, where's the third heaven? That's where paradise is. Paradise used to be in the heart of the earth until the resurrection of Christ. I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Now, I want to make a point there. This passage tells me that we can go to heaven even in the spirit or in the body. When your loved one passed away, they, their soul and spirit did not go back into the ground. Amen. Now, I know some people foolishly teach soul sleep. That's absolute error. Because when you die as a Christian, absent from the body and present with the Lord, you, you say, but it'll just be my spirit. I want you to know it's going to be good. I don't know all about it, but I know enough about it that I'm looking forward to it. And you know, Christians, the only people I know that want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. 
We try to preserve ourselves, and I, I know that that's reality. It's just the way we are. But ladies and gentlemen, if you just think about what we got on the other side. <laughs> uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus in heaven in a resurrected body. Jesus walked out of the tomb. The apostles saw him. Thomas touched him. And now he's in a real place. And your loved ones, if they're there, if they're saved, they're in heaven, they're in a good place right where Jesus is. Let me say this. uh, This present earth. uh, uh, Look at Genesis. uh, Look at the verses. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. I'm going so fast. And I saw a new heaven. How many likes to hear that? And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, let me say something about this present earth and this present atmosphere that we're living in now is going to be burnt up. You say, is that in the Bible? God's not going to destroy the world with water again. He's going to destroy it with fire. That Greek word, fervent heat, in the passage literally means a fever hot. The planet Earth is destined for fire and is stored up with fire. We know about the atomic nature of the universe. Everything contains a molecular fire to it. Your clothes you got on Earth has molecular fire in it. The paper I've got up here on the stage has fire in it. Uh, Chairs that you're sitting on are stored with fire. The earth itself has a molded core of packed with fire. One day God is going to send fire down and burn out every every pure or impure thing And what's left is going to be resurrected in a new heaven and a new earth. Woo! Just taking, you know, they'll take an old junker, get him all burned up and put him in the refiner and get a new car out of it. One of these days, this earth's going to dissolve with fervent heat. But see, it all won't all be gone because the Bible said in Psalms, the foundation of the earth standeth forever. Uh, the particles that are left are going to be resurrected by the power of God into a new heaven Amen. and a new earth. Whoo! I never took very many geography lessons, but that's a pretty good one. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a new earth. See, our old man was purged by the blood and made new. And this old world and the old heavens will be purged by fire and will be made new. And be a new heaven and a new earth. And the Bible speaks of a new Jerusalem. Amen? Number two, I like this. Not only do <laughs> y'all okay? Somebody ought to shout tonight. The geography of heaven. But I want to talk about the government of heaven. How's it going to be run, Brother Anthony? Is it going to be run like a sin cursed world we got now? Or is it going to be different, Chad? I want all y'all to know heaven is not going to be anything like what we're living in today. Amen. Amen. These politicians, they get up, and they're one thing three years ago, and now they're completely new. Kamala Harris is a socialist Marcus. Now she's a Trump, she's on the Trump train. She believes everything Donald Trump believes. God help us. You vote for her, you ought not be left alone by yourself. But I, 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 Lord, get off of that, Pastor. I'm just talking about government. How's this new government going to be? See, heaven's going to be a majestic place. 
Uh, God will rule in uh, majesty in heaven. Amen. God dwells with his people in heaven. And because the Lord rules in majesty, there'll be some no mores there. Number one, there's going to be no more sorrow. Can you imagine being out of a sin-cursed world? Hey, about all we know sorrow in this world. But let's think about this. There one day we will not have any sorrow. No graves to go to. No sickness in your body. No arguments. No politicians. I ought to get somebody shouting. There's come a time when God will turn every tear into a telescope. Every hurt to a hallelujah. Every Calvary to an Easter. There'll be no more tears in heaven. There'll be no sighing and no more dying. And there'll be no more disease. And I was looking at you. Uh, good to have Adley with us. I mean, I don't, she run around for tough territory over there, but good to have you with us, Adley. You know your mama was one of my favorite people. And when she got cancer, it broke me. I broke my heart, and I know it broke yours. But can you imagine if you ever went through cancer or some dis disease, this will mean something to you. No more cancer. No more disease. No, 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 go, go. somebody say amen. No more sorrow. I'll tell you what else. There'll be no more sin. So what my Bible said. My Bible said, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There ain't going to be no more sin. Sin's what messed this planet up anyway. Sin ultimately is behind every sorrow, every tear, every heartache, every sickness, every pain. We live in a sin-cursed world, but one day we'll be delivered from it. Y'all okay? Amen. Thirdly, look at, now this will take a little bit longer. Look at Revelation 9, or 21, 9 through 21. And the third point, it's on your outline. And I'll have several points you can write just little notes on your outline. The glory of heaven. I want all y'all to know, I've been to a few glorious places. But I've never been to anywhere like heaven. I, I guess one of my favorite places in all the world, I wouldn't mind being there tonight, is out on the Sea of Galilee. Where it's real calm and peaceful. And I can remember how the Lord said, peace be still. And uh, sit there in that motel and watch that uh, sun come up over the Golden Heights. Whew, what a beautiful place. But I want you all to know something. Ain't nothing has as much glory as what one day you're going to inherit. And it's a place called heaven. Let's look at these verses together. Are you all with me? Chad tried to teach me all these words today, and you'll probably find out he failed. And there came unto me one of the, verse 9, seven angels which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come up, come hither. I'll show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Imagine that. 
and it had high a and it had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. In them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he talked with me and had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lies four square and the length is as large as the breadth and the measure of the city with the reed 12,000 furloins. The length and the breadth of the height of it are equal. Glory to God. I'll show you how much that is in a minute. And he measured a wall thereof, a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. Listen to this. Not only the street, but I, sometimes we pass this, uh, Zach. Listen to this. And the building of the wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like under clear glass. Whew. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, and the second, sapphire, and the third, chalcedony, and the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, a sardonyx, the sixth, sardis, the seventh, crystallite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysophorus, and the eleventh, adjacent, and the twelfth, amethyst, and the twelve greats were twelve pearls, every, whoa, glory, Every several gate was one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Somebody, y'all sit back there like a bunch of dead mules. What is wrong with you? That's where you're going. Now let's talk, let's break it down for you. Y'all can take notes. I got about five things I want you to put under this point. First, the source of the city. It come down out of heaven. Hey, by the way, it's already up there. Jesus went and prepared a place. It's already there, Chad. Just waiting to come down. Now, there's two theories, and I've changed. So you changed? You never changed. I used to teach what's well, coming down and will be a satellite city. I don't teach anymore. I believe it's going to come all the way down to the earth. And there's reasons I do. Is because this city is not only made, and I'll show you that in a minute, not only made for the church, it is the bride's, it's where we're going to stay. But also it has some, see, there ain't going to be no separated people then. Because also it talked about the 12 tribes of Israel being inscribed there too. And they'll come and go. It'll be, the earth will be theirs. They're, <laughs> well, they're the hidden treasure in the earth. And the earth will be theirs. But they'll come in the city and we'll be living in the city. Somebody help me right there. Are y'all happy or not? Some of you look glum to me. You act like that ain't really real. Yes, it's real. Amen. 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 You think 70 years is all we got? You think this world's all we got? Hush up! We got a wonderful city we're going to. Because this is coming down from God. The sights of the city. It, it, it shows the very glory of God. There won't be a moon there or sun there because God and the Lamb will be the light. The, the walls of uh, Jasper are not to keep us, not there to keep us in because the gates are open. The walls are not there to keep the wicked out because they're in hell. 
The walls are monuments to the mighty power and the grace of God. Woo. And the sounds of the city. You ever, how many of y'all know what songs will be sung in that city? Anybody know? If you know, raise your hand. Anybody? What is it? Huh? Well, not quite. What's the song of the city? Anybody know? Anybody know? Chad, you know. Do you know? You're a musician. You know what he said? Okie from Muskokie. Okay. No. You find it in Revelation 15, 3. Here's the song. And they sung the song of Moses, the serpent, servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou, uh, thou King of the saints, all of the redeemed will be there. They'll sing the song of Moses. That's the first time they ever sung a song when they done the song of Moses. And then they're going to sing the song, Oh, redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Somebody help. What a song. Then the size of the city. Y'all with me? Is this all right? Dale, be proud of me tonight with me. I'm going right down these verses. Size of the city, verse 15, 16. City is four square. What's that mean? It is 1,500 miles in each direction and 1,500 miles straight up. Now you say, well, would you tell me how many total miles that is? I'm glad you asked because here it is. 225 million square miles is that place. Whew. 225 million square miles. Plenty of room. Hallelujah. Ain't none of y'all ever seen nothing like that. You said, I've been to the Biltmore. The Biltmore's an outdoor shack compared to that. I've been to Elvis's mansion. Well, I haven't been there like to go, but it ain't nothing like what we're going to. Can you imagine 225 million square miles? Vast. Anthony, that's where your parents are. That's where my mom and dad are. That's where many of my friends are. And that's where I'm going one day. Some of you are looking like, man, bless me if you can. I want you to know if heaven don't bless you, your blast is broke. Am I preaching? Then the sanctuary of that city. Well, now, us do a little, there's going to be, there was Solomon's temple and then the rebuilt temple and, and then the, the temple of the church. Then there's going to be a tribulation temple and there's going to be a millennial temple. What about this temple? Look at verse 22 and 23. How many's learned something tonight? And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Amen. And the city had no need of sun, neither of moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God Amen. did lighten it. Amen. You remember, oh, you remember in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He said, oh, yeah, he created the moon and sun. That's long before he ever created the moon and sun. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the light of that city. That's why when God turned his back on his son, everything went black at noontime. Whoa! Amen. <laughs> It 
That is kind of good, ain't I? I'm about to get happy a moment preaching tonight. The Old Testament temple was a picture and prophecy of the Lord Jesus. Do you know all them temples in the Old Testament? All about Jesus. It had a gate. Jesus said, I'm the door. They had an altar. Jesus shed his blood for us. They had a labor. That's where we're cleansed by the word. They had a table of shoe bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. They had a golden candle of it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. They had incense was burning. Jesus said, is our great high priest that's touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but uh, yet without sin. Woo. Everybody all right? Look at verse 24 through 27. I'm trying to finish. I'm preaching fast. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring the glory and honor in it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. Man, I tell you what. That right there is enough to shout. I hate darkness. Ain't going to be no darkness there. Whew. And they, shall bring, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. And there shall no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something. Heaven will be inhabited by multiple millions and billions of people. I want to tell you who's going to be there. Every aborted baby's going to be there. The saints of all ages will be there. The nations of the world will be there. Amen. And I want y'all to know, how many of y'all know you're going to be there? Everybody above the age of accountability got to be saved and to go to that place. See, you ain't going to get there by religion. And you're not going to get there by being a humanitarian or your church membership. Only thing that will take you there is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nothing can I bring, Lois, but only to the cross. I can claim. You want to know why I'm going? Because there was a cross where he shed his blood, and I trusted by faith that blood. Amen. Lastly, I'm done. Look in chapter 22. You know what I don't like? And if you're one of these, I don't like you. I love you, but I don't like you. If you're one of these sad-looking prudes, that don't laugh or don't smile and can't enjoy anything. I hope they put you over in the corner somewhere. Because I like happy people. I is one of them. Praise God. I want to speak about the gladness of heaven. Heaven's a meaningful place. Chapter 22, verse 17. Heaven will play a place of satisfaction. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him his thirst come. And let whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Hey, Sean, it'll satisfy you. Ain't much satisfies people anymore. You know, the people back 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they were satisfied with having nothing. And they were happy with it. Today, here's how kids are when you go to Christmas. They have 17 gifts on the tree. They have took three hours and 14 minutes and 10 seconds to open them. And here's what they say at the end. Is that it? That's just the kind of way we live. Nothing satisfies anybody. I want you to know that's going to be a place of satisfaction. Amen. It's going to be a place of sufficiency. Look at chapter 22 and verse 2 in the midst of the street of it. And only uh, either side of the river was a tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree 
were for the healing of the nations. Glory to God. There'll be trees there, and they bear each month, and we'll be eating. We'll be eating there. Hello, Joe, you all say amen. You'll get to eat. But really what that symbolizes is the sufficiency of heaven. And then heaven, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I want to go to heaven because it's going to be boring. I've heard people say that. And now I want you to know it ain't going to be boring. Let me show you one more thing. Look at verse number three. And there shall be no curse there or no more curse. But the throne of God and of the, and of the Lamb shall be in it. And listen to this. His servants shall serve him. You know what I've been thinking. I'll start 47 years Sunday. I've done my best to be your servant. And I did my best. I probably didn't measure up all time, but I've done my best. But can you imagine? And I, I love God. I do it from the heart. But could you imagine being in a place where you don't have any limitations of your body and no limitations of sin and no frailty like I have, and then I will be able to serve him forever and ever and never get tired. And I will for the first time, for the first time, for the first time, 100% be able to give him all the glory. I do my best now. I serve him till I'm tired, can't walk. Gary Bain came in my office, woke me up from sleep this evening. Shame on him. <laughs> but up there, we never sleep. Never get tired. Never get tired. <laughs> and I'll just, what are you going to do up there? I'm going to love on him. And I don't know what's going to be done. There's something going to be done because I'm going to serve him. Yeah. Woo! And right now, serving him is wonderful. I love serving him. But to serve him with no limitations? To serve him without any critics in the church? Amen. 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 I want to have somebody say, well, that sermon was too long. Oh, that sermon's too short. Don't you have anything to preach? Or why wasn't you at my funeral? Well, they didn't tell me they were, that their loved one died. Hello? Aren't you... I want you to know, you don't know what pastors put up with. They put up with a bunch of junk. I got people mad at me because I didn't go to the mom's funeral that I didn't even know she had died. I tell you what happened one time. Y'all ain't going to believe this. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm telling the truth right from the gospel. There's a guy called the orphan cities. Mom died. I'm telling you, this ain't embellishing nothing. This is what Pat Preacher put up. Said his mom died in North Carolina. I Cindy, Cindy was here. She'd tell the gospel truth about it. I said, well, call him up. To, uh, see where the funeral home is. I'll go down to the funeral home. I'll send some flowers. Well, he never did go back. And then he come to my office. He kind of troubled. Elevator didn't go quite to the roof. And uh, just kind of different. I'm telling you. And I said, uh, I'm sorry I didn't make your mom's funeral. You know what he told me? Oh, she really didn't die. I said, you mean, you called up here and said, no, she died in my mind. I wanted her dead, but she didn't die. <laughs> and you know what I did? I called my psychiatrist up. I said, I need some help. <laughs> I'm telling you, son. If it can happen, it happens in church. Hello. First wedding I ever had. Lois was supposed to be a joyful occasion. The groom passed out right on the stage. Went bang. 
and I knew it was going to be a bad wedding because the mom gave away her daughter and came down the aisle blowing kisses. And ever since then, this thing's been crazy. But I'm going to a world with no crazies, no dummies, no idiots. I'm going to a wonderful place with perfect people. Give me five right there, Brother Steve. Some of y'all have a, won't you smile so your face will know you're alive. Get up and sing something about heaven, Lois. <laughs> Act like you're going there, will you? Come on, Lois, sing it. I'll help you. Stand on, y'all. Lois going to sing a song. We can sing about heaven. And if you want to shout about it, want to praise him about it, just do it right now. <laughs> Thank you for those that are online, shut-ins, hurting people. God, heaven's real. What a day that'll be when we get there. And it will be worth it all when we get there. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.